Hello my friends and welcome to the skinning tutorial for Starmade. Concerning skinning, um, what exactly is skinning in Starmade? Well, yep. So, you see every time I look different here. And that is basically what skinning is about in Starmade. It is changing your outfit from changing your outfit from kind of uh, kind of this particular here to this particular here. And there's a really easy-ish way to do that. So let's close it. And yes, my PC is talking German to me. So, skinning is taking wrong kind of folder, taking the files that come with the StarMate game, which you can find the skinning files under data, models, character. And then the important files are the player helm emissive file, the player helm file, the player text file, and the player text emissive file. Which these are the files that the game uses as texture. Dave, as he's called. And they all look kind of wonky. As you see, let's buff them up. This is the helmet texture. So let's start at the helmet. Because it's the easier um, file to start at. The helmet you're seeing here um, is comprised of two sections. This section here isn't of particularly big interest since it's the inside of the helmet which currently in the no, the game isn't not modeled and displayed, so it is irrelevant. This part of the skin is the exterior of the helmet. And as you see, <laughs> I gave this a particularly big load of attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. And um, the yellow line around around the visor is necessary to prohibit um, the inside of this glass to be kind of changed because it's very darkish shade of black and transparent and with dark colors out here this probably causes issues that's why I put the yellow line in. Anyways, the software I'm using for all my skinning stuff is GIMP. GIMP? which is this particular one, is a freeware. And you can search GIMP2 on Google and download it. And it's free of charge, costs you nothing at all. And it will give you a program with many capabilities, a bit similar to Blender. Um, which is sometimes a bit complicated, but nonetheless very capable. So, how do we get from here, or from here, to here? Basically, what happened in between was that the helmet got remodeled, the resolution got buffed, to 256 by 256 from 128 to 128, meaning this particular helmet has double the resolution of this one. And then it got changed so that, um, yeah, it's different now. If you, or this particular bit of the helmet texture here that I'm currently marking with the cutting tool, this one here is the front of the helmet. 
to the side here this is the if you're looking from the helmet frontally it's the left sided texture or if you're looking out the helmet front the right sided texture whatever this is the top of the helmet the other side this is the back of the helmet and this is what is where the neck is sticking through the helmet that's all you need to know that's a blank that's a blank which because this is a cuboid um, outside it's going to get folded up onto the helmet skin yeah so what we basically do from to get from there from there to there is we go ahead um, I'm not going to change save any of this those we basically start by doing a bunch of stuff for example well let's make a really funky helmet I've marked this if I mark something in GIMP I restrict editing it to this surface only then we applied some kind of funky color let's make a funky color yeah that looks funky enough We're going to have to use the brush. Make it big. Big ass brush. And now we just recolor the side of the helmet. Nice. By the way, if you hover over it, you can see if I place the toolbox on the, the other side, that you can change what you do by pressing buttons on the keyboard. Yeah, and that's what I basically learned to do. Anyways, let's move this. Oops, nope, that wasn't the wrong one. By the way, Control Z resets what you did last in GIMP. And we basically... Oh, wrong one. Do that over and over again. For the top side, we're going to change another... use another color. Let's go full on blue, some kind of green, and leave out yeah. Leave out red. You're going to have to I think you get it by now. You're going to have to be precise though. Let's put it in. Oops. Nope, wrong color. By clicking on this kind of small arrow here. Besides the colors, you can change which color you want to put down. As you see. And the color that is in the upper um, rectangle, I think is the word, is the color you currently use. So, behind, we're going to put on a color as well. So, we just use our cutting function, which is which is R, because R is the English word for rectangle. Of course, the first letter of the English word rectangle is an R. Yep, and now we just go ahead. We use this one, put it in. We can spare this texture. And we're just going to cut out the frontal texture. Make it empty. Yeah, and that's going to be it. Now we can change, save it. In... Yep. Nope. Yep. Player helmet skinning. And that's just... Oh, before we go to the savings part, by attaching a suffix to the end dot something you change the files so by choosing this kind of file I use the normal GIMP XCF that would be your standard photography file that's what paint gives you GIMP can also do PDFs whatever you like I usually like to go with PNGs because they know transparency 
which is very important because we, want, we don't want to compress it, that's why I just put compression to zero, because we have a transparent section which is here, that section here is transparent, which is going to be transparent on the helmet so that we can look out of. Anyways, now that we have change saved it, <laughs> you basically get the gist. You get your files and you modify them the way you like them, to your liking. You can take inspiration on the internet, or you can take a pre-done file already and modify that. Whichever you like. And that basically gave us this helmet. And to the same extent... Nope, I don't want to change anything on the helmet. That gave us also... Um, this... Player text... template. This player texture. Which is both files that myself and uh, Spot made. Together we modified like this. And... All of this, then... Well... Well... Let's just start by comparing the two originals to one another. Mm. Which this here is the original skin file. And as you see, this one looks a bit like garbage and very well, not good. But there's a bunch of important things that we need to know. <coughs> so let's get in it. By taking a look. Um, let's make it big. For skinning, this up here is your left boot. This is your right boot. That's the top of your left boot. That's the top of your right boot. That's the bottom of your boot. And the other boot. Um, this, here, is your head, and this is the neck, and therefore, those together give you the player head, which is in the helmet when you wear a helmet, or visible if you don't wear a helmet. So, pay particular attention to what you do with this. It's very similar to the normal helmet skin, where you have your face, front, you have the top, you have the sides, you have the back, and the bottom where the neck is. So, that's fairly the same. This is your right glove, this is your left glove, or so I think. Um, then we come to the torso. This one here is the back side of the torso, this particular one. This one here is the front side of the torso, and the top, where the shoulders are. The top where the shoulders are is this particular bit. This is one of the sides of the torso, which is, I think, if you look at it from the left side of the torso and the right side of the torso, and this is the left inside of the leg, and that over by here is the right inside of the leg, which basically goes in between here. By the way, if you look here, there's a small four-pointed arrow you can move the picture in and about in here, which is sometimes particularly useful. Um, this here is one of your two arms, and I don't particularly know which is which arm, but there's a schematic on your Starmed install under data and scanning resources, and there is all the templates, the shading, player, text template, and the helmets, and all that kind of stuff that you'll ever need for skinning. 
this part here is the upper arm and the lower arm. And somewhere around here is where the elbow is and where the arm gets or where if the arm gets bent the texture warping occurs on the suit texture. Up here is the shoulder parts, so this particularly particular part of the texture is also warped when the suit is moving. So keep this in mind. Same goes here. This is the part where it's attached to the shoulder, going to get warped. Somewhere around here is also going to occur some texture warping when the arm is moving, the character model. So keep that in mind. And the same applies for here, where the darkened parts are, is where they move the texture when the character is walking. And therefore, whatever you do, try to situate, try to avoid situating textures where there's going to occur texture warping. Which is something that if you take a look at, I put the knees somewhere where around there where the texture warping is going to not occur to avoid that. And also I put texture parts up here which could be warped, no problem. So yeah. You just have to look out for that. Around here about is just the elbow, like I said. And just if you wonder why this side and this side look so similar, I effectively took the upper part and mirrored it down there. Which saves you a lot of time working with textures to do copy-paste. I also changed something on the face here. I changed the eyes, so if you take a look at the eyes, you see that it, also, it has a little more vibrant color. Is high resolution, like I told you. And also the eyes look a bit better. More like a person and less like a robot. Yeah. Anything you want to do with skinning involves... Um, the correct amount of... Or correct usage of... Wording. Correct pixeling and stuff of the chest plate and, and all that. And also colors and knowledge of where it's going to be on the final skin. So, now we've done that, you basically know how to do it. You're going to have to find reference on the internet, which the first reference. For this one, particular one looking about like that, I took from Gundam Seed, um, and I modeled this after the Orb Union standard outfit that Kira Yamato is wearing when he's piloting the Freedom. So, hence this kind of look. And I added some glowy bits. And how we do that, I'm going to get into a second. Let's put up the player texture emissive skin. And if I put this right next to here, you'll see it's remarkably similar. As similar to, to the fact that if we put it like this, you'll see that wrong key, some parts of the normal skin stay white, whereas other parts are completely blacked out. And, or, yeah, almost blacked out on this particular version. The emissive skin, basically, is an additional layer of skinning. And this needs to be understood in the following way. Now that was a <laughs> mistake in skinning. <laughs> oh boy. That was when I got started with skinning. 
the eyes, I added some emissive layer on the helmet and it basically messed up the helmet. <laughs> oh boy. Yep, as you see, this particular version of the skin is way too bright. Everything is just way too bright. Which was because... <laughs> what I actually did was putting... Changing the emissive layer of the skin, which... Nope. Normally looks like something like this. Oops, wrong one. Like this, which is dark and has some light parts. To grey. Everything was just your standard stock grey. And with grey I mean... I put every value on here to... 125. Which basically looks like this. This color. Um, to put it somewhere where we are not going to harm anything. Nope. Like this color. And the emissive skin shows for the brightness level of the part of the skin. And therefore only looks for black-white contrast. Which means that this here would be a um, moderately illuminated part by the emissive skin, which means this particular part here, whichever part of the skin this would coincide with, would be illuminated more or less strong. Which is something we don't really want, that's why we're going to not do that. So, um, yeah, it, it looks at the brightness, so if you want to change yours, or if you want to have a skin like this, look as, not as plain like this, which doesn't really have contrast, more like that, which has very dark and very light parts, or like this, which has very strong parts and very lightly colored parts, you're going to have to have a good emissive skin. And therefore, emissive skinning is required. And how I do it is, I take my normal skin, and I just start to black out everything on the skin that I don't want highlighted. Until I have a version like this, where you see there still is the semblance to the other skin. But there are some highlighted things there, like, for example, the yellow of the logo, or the yellow lines here, or the red symbols, or the eyes, or the boots, and... Yeah. Which, yeah, effectively went ahead and, like, did the following. I took a brush, just start to put on an almost black shade. Um, something like... Like that. And I just applied it to everywhere on the skin I didn't want to have highlight. Not as therapy as I do it right now, but you get the gist. And blacking it out. And that, yeah, is how making your emissive skin works. For the sake of it, please understand I'm not going to do create recreating the emissive layer completely again, but I think you get the gist if I flash it around often enough how this particular business works. You have to remember one thing though. The emissive skin can only highlight parts of your skin which are of a particularly bright color. So if you're trying to highlight a very dark shade, like... Um, let's take the color of this one. 
Um, which this one is pitch black, apparently. Yep, it's almost pitch black. Uh, if you want to do that, the the skin is not going to do it since it can only emit based on the brightness of the normal texture, your player texture. And if there is no brightness to emit from, it's not going to do anything. But if you have bright parts like maybe um, red parts or white parts or yellow parts, which this particular one here is a relatively bright yellow, very strong yellow. It will emit light, and that is an effect that I use on the skin. Oops, as you see here, if we zoom in a bit, you're seeing that the eyes are highlighted here, and this is highlighted here. And there's a bunch of other things highlighted, like the logo and some lines, in comparison to the normal skin that the other two squad might have, because the server was a little bit derpy and didn't show their real skins. So yeah. You also... I also played around a little bit with coloring, and as you see, the shade of color that I used was HTML called 12, 12, 12, which means it is very dark, but it's not entirely black, since black has the color code zero, all zeros. It does have a little color to it, or a little bit brightness level to it, and what this effectively does is that instead of being pitch black in darkness, the character parts that aren't particularly well highlighted by the emissive player texture. Still, glow a slight bit, and that makes a big difference as well. It's like a small detail on a car, which um, the coloring on the car is particularly glossy or metallic, or some other stuff. It just adds a little effect to it, a little depth and a little certain something. Which, yeah, really does benefit. So, now, now that we have our custom skin files that we want to load, we have completed our skin, which I'm not going to skin something for you on a video that would just take too long. Please understand that. We're going to launch StarMade. And, yeah, why the hell not launch the dev build, because it's a, entirely similar and I need a skin on the dev build. Uh, yeah, critical error. Ignore that. I'm currently recording without internet connection, because, yeah, mm, why the hell not? And StarMate is a little bit wonky when it comes to recording without an internet connection. Yep. You basically have your connection set up this far, you go to modding, and create custom skin. You go to create custom skin. And then you browse in your texture files, in your files. And since I have my files in StarMade 014, this is the main texture. And this is the main texture we're gonna wanna have Player texture template here. And it's the main emissive texture. You won't have the player texture emissive template. EM stands for emissive. As the helmet skin texture, we want to have our player helmet skinning. As the player helmet emissive texture, we want to have our player 
from emissive template. Thank you. Now we go to OK. Then we just type in a skinning, a skin name. And it will save it. Yes, I want to use this file as my skin. And if you have clicked yes now, you can just go and launch the game. Alrighty, now the game is loading. I've changed recording mode. <laughs> Please, come in. We're going currently logging on the dev build, and as you see in the top left corner up there, it's uploading my skin right now. But let's take a look at ourselves. I would say we're looking perfectly normal. And as you see, you know that we put on an emissive skin, right? That... or the skin that we designed was only colors, right? Um, flat colors. And now you see we have some kind of texturing on the helmet, which is entirely because we put on the emissive skin. And that's what the emissive skin does. It takes the bi base color and brightness of your normal skin and adds an amount of color, an amount of brightness based on the emissive layer. Brightness. And that's then how the skin looks. You're also seeing that... Um, Around here, around here, are highlighted bits where it's all white, whereas the rest is appears to be kind of grayish. Which is because there are parts highlighted by the skin. You see here, it's very bright yellows, almost like glowing is highlighted by the emissive skin. All sorts of stuff. It's best to show it from there. We have the back, which... Here is stuff highlighted by the emissive skin. Here, as you see, some stuff seems to be a bit clear off highlighted, but who cares? Yeah, that's how it's, that's how you can make a very awesome looking skin relatively easily. Um, yeah, let's detach our mouse, take off the helmet. That's basically all I have to say to this. I hope you got it all, since it isn't an easy process, but if you did what I told you to, took inspiration, got going with the skinning, and did all the steps like importing it into StarMade and making sure your missive skin is right, you're going to have an awesome looking skin. That's it from me. Have a, ni have a nice day. Bye.